data services, as I just alluded to, drove up your revenue, which hit around 16% higher uh, in the first uh, half of this year. Uh, your view in terms of where Saf uh, Safaricom will be headed, clearly there is going to be a big focus on data as the mobile voice uh, price wars started late August. Yes, look, you know, data has always been on the master plan and voice, the, the voice pricing is going to erode over time. I mean, that's just the, the, the nature of the, the business. It will become commoditized. So we started invested in data a few years ago. We now have the only uh, 3G network in, um, in Kenya. Uh, and, you know, currently I think something like 30% of our, our uh, network is 3G active. So we continue to invest. We continue to invest in cable capacity. And um, uh, you know, we uh, expect to keep that lead ahead of our competitors over the next 18 to 24 months. Mm, well, it's quite interesting because text messages, uh, money transfers, and internet services made up 23.8% of your revenue against around 17.7% uh, a year earlier. So a big contribution there. Uh, what kind of contribution do you foresee data having uh, for Safaricom going forward? Look, we're not going to speculate at the moment. What we're finding is that we're finding some new and interesting uses for data. So M-Pesa and mobile banking or mobile money transfer really um, has, has come up trumps for us. It has exceeded everyone's expectation. And the thing is now becoming uh, EBITDA positive and, in fact, delivering something like 30% EBITDA right now. So we expect that as the functionality continues to grow uh, on M-Pesa, you will see more usage and you'll see more margin coming through. Similarly, because we've already invested, you know, it's a sunk cost for, uh, for data. So we've invested into capacity. All we have to do now is to fill that capacity and we'll drive cost and we'll drive cost down and we'll drive usage up. Well, of course, you said that internet penetration in Kenya relatively no low, and of course, you do dominate the 3G space. But just looking at what happened in the voice space, do you think that price wars could ensue going forward? Because clearly, uh, a lot of your competitors are going to start becoming innovative in other arenas as well. And I think that's where the real competition is going to come from. Everyone has been very excited about the, um, you know, the price cut, the so-called price war down to three shillings. Uh, but that's temporary. You know, it's only ever going to be temporary. Um, I'm not saying that the price is going to go up, but the people can't continue to cut prices because it's unsustainable at the moment. Uh, therefore, th you're going to have to compete on something else. And I think they will start to compete on innovations, the smart ones. Um, but, you know, people tend to assume that Safaricom were the first here and we had an advantage. We weren't. We were actually the third network in, uh, in Kenya. Uh, we just worked hard for it. And the competitors we've had, we have now, have always been the, the same competitors. So they're going to need to up their game. I expect them to do so. But, you know, the Safaricom team is a very strong team. It's a very loyal, has a very loyal customer base of 16 and a half million customers. Uh, and our stakeholders, our dealers, I have to tell you, we've got the strongest network of distribution um, and dealers and you know we'll continue to be good to them and they'll continue to be good to us. Uh, it's quite interesting I mean we've seen you add 2.2 million customers uh, from a year earlier we know that the price was was as I said uh, as I alluded to earlier um, only really started happening late August uh, mobile calls your revenue up 3% what kind of numbers can we expect going forward as of course the lower tariffs uh, by your competitors start filtering through? Look, in terms of customer numbers, it hasn't, the price war hasn't really made any difference because it's not the price of the, uh, of the call that makes the difference, it's the price of entry. So if you have a high barriers to entry with high handset, relatively high handset costs for a low income market, then you're not going to drive the numbers quite so much. So the absolute numbers of customers um, hasn't been impacted by the price war. What we will see is a continuing decline on the proportion of voice as a proportion of our overall revenues. Uh, and we will see pressures on the margin on voice, for sure. Mm. Aver uh, average revenue per user also coming under pressure on the voice and mobile yeah. side of things. Uh, where do you foresee that going? We're sitting at around 321 shillings at this point in time, and that's down from 370.8. We expect a, a degree of stabilization because data usage will, come, will start to kick in, and that's going to raise your, your average ARPU up. Mm. All right, uh, in relative terms, yeah, sorry, in relative terms, but overall we expect to see a stabilization. Mm. Here. You mentioned MK Show and Pesa, of course, a great offering coming through uh, by Safaricom, and this, of course, assisting you as well because we saw uh, money transfers growing by around 63.9%. Uh, we saw uh, a lot of people coming up and, of course, starting uh, to use these new offerings. What about competitors in this sector, and, of course, a lot of people jumping on the same bandwagon? Yeah, it's, it's not a new bandwagon, and they have jumped on the bandwagon in the past. You know, our competitors have had mobile money transfer 
products in the market for the last few years. It just simply hasn't gained any traction because we've got about 13, just over 13 million M-Pesa customers. When you've got that critical mass, it's very difficult for a newcomer to, to pitch in. So, sure, we saw one of our other uh, competitors launch something a couple of days ago. Um, we're not really that concerned about it because the functionality doesn't really compare to M-Pesa. You know, here in Kenya, uh, M-Pesa has become a verb. So people talk about m pesering people in the same way as you say, you know, I'm going to hoover the floor, I'm going to, uh, you, you know, um, uh, whatever you do to the lawnmower. I can't remember. I haven't done the lawn for such a long time now. Um, but, you know, it, it has really become very ingrained in the, in the, in the Kenyan psyche. Yeah. So it's difficult for, uh, for newcomers to unseat, um, unseat that as a product. Well, I think, I think most uh, investors out there expected you to really be focusing on data services. What can we expect next from Safaricom? I mean, you, you've, you've kept your market share at 76.7%. Uh, we saw price war, war coming to the fore. Many say that it's going to be a very difficult environment going forward, despite the fact that you are heading into new services as well. Look, I think we've, we've always said, we've certainly said for the past couple of years, that it will be challenging to maintain this market share. Um, you know, I, I, I hate using the word dominance because there's some negative con connotations there, but um, we, uh, we think it will be challenging for us to do that. But, but really, we've grown to the market share we've got, uh, partly because of what we do, but also partly because of what the other guys have failed to do. Um, we were a pretty Kenyan, pretty much a Kenyan company, um, and we've got you know, quite a lot of loyal, uh, loyal, a very loyal customer base uh, behind that. So we expect to lose some market share over the coming two or three years, um, uh, but I don't know what that final number will be. Okay. But we will, we'll absolutely. Absolutely, we'll remain as, as market leaders for many years to come. Very quickly, Bob, we're running out of time. Looking at your second tranche, of course, uh, bond issuance, uh, we know that it's going to be for CapEx spend. Give us an indication of what the money will be used for and also just uh, give us an update in terms of cost-cutting measures because many investors expect uh, Safaricom to be embarking on that soon. Yeah, look, you know, my, my primary focus now is to really get the network capacity sorted out. Um, the, the capital structure in the company at the moment is, I think, suboptimal. So we need to get some more funding into the, uh, into the company. Uh, we don't currently have any plans around acquisitions, but we've always said that uh, spectrum is something that we need, and when opportunities come, we'll go get that. So my primary focus now is to continue to invest in uh, capacity, to continue to roll out, to continue to, to, in, to uh, invest in, um, in the data element of the business. Uh, the timing for that, we expect it to be completed in the next two or three months. Um, you, sorry, the, the last question as well? Cost-cutting measures, very quickly. Oh, cost-cutting measures, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, look, you know, we've already started a program of cost-cutting measures, and we're going to keep that cost pretty tight. If you look at the, the numbers last year, costs actually increased by 24%. That's mm. slightly deceptive because we paid bonuses last year, sorry, this year, which we didn't pay last year. Uh, and if you take that out, then cost on payroll was pretty, uh, was pretty, um, pretty much in line with the overall growth. Uh, but we expect to continue to drive that without losing, losing focus. We expect to continue to get the cost much, much under control in the, uh, in the coming six months. But